How's it going guys? 3.23 a.m. 3rd of February here in Japan. We have a difficult question for neuro for pediatrics TCK, neuro for step one. Very similar question shows up on the clinical master series forms TCK neuro. Before we get started, please subscribe to my channel. Really appreciate it. Give the video a like. Really appreciate it. Find me on Instagram at melman underscore medical. I'm EHLMAN underscore medical. Links down below. Find me on Telegram. Links to Telegram group and channel are down below. Now start the clip. Three-year-old girl. She has progressively worsening gait for the past 24 hours. She recently recovered from chickenpox. Vitals are normal. Physical exam shows an inability to sit or stand unsupported. There is bilateral nystagmus. Lumbar puncture shows no abnormalities and a negative gram stain. Question just simply wants to know uh, which of the following is most likely diagnosis. All right. So... Let's just whip through the answers here. We'll go backwards. So I see Frederick attacks here on the fucking answer. You'll hear this disease thrown around a lot during your prep. Maybe you've seen it in QBank. Exceedingly low yield for your simile. You could be aware that it's a trinucleotide repeat disorder, GAA expansion. Your simile doesn't really give a fuck about that. Okay, autosomal recessive. Well, you could be aware of. I'll tell you what they want you to know, all right? This is going to be a pediatric disorder, usually. And it's going to be a patient who has pes cavus, which means high arched feet. They can get cardiomyopathy. Okay. So, and scoliosis. So pes cavus, scoliosis, and they'll say which of the following could be the most likely cause of death in this patient. It's cardiomyopathy. I think that's the question I've seen on one of the PEDS forms. They just want a cardiomyopathy for this. Point is, wrong fucking answer. Choice D, labyrinthitis, wrong answer, albeit difficult. And uh, I've made a prior YouTube uh, question on this because this is a repeat question on one of the step one forms. You need to know this is viral infection followed by tinnitus and or vertigo. Okay. And they might tell you in the question that uh, the light reflex is distorted. They are not talking about anything to do with the eyes. They are talking about some tympanic light reflex that could reflect uh abnormal inner ear pressure if a patient has congestion, uh, such as after a viral infection, okay? So this is inflammation of the inner ear, labyrinthitis, tinnitus, and or vertigo following a viral infection. Wrong fucking answer. Choice C, benign, proxismal positional vertical. Uh, B, PPV, wrong answer. So this is going to be a patient who has vomiting with the room spinning idiopathically for about 30 seconds. That's literally it, okay? And they want you to know you do a Dix Hall Pike maneuver to diagnose, Epley maneuver to treat. Dix Hall Pike maneuver is when the patient during physical exam is leaned back quickly with the neck turned, and that can reproduce symptoms, okay? I'm actually going to tell you the highest yield point about this. Extremely fucking weird, not my opinion. It's on the NVMe exams. They want you to know the cause of BPPV is semi posterior semicircular canal otolith. Okay, so you can get a, a stone for whatever fucking reason in the in the posterior semicircular canal. Uh, and so they give a vignette as I described, and they'll say which the following is most likely to be seen in this patient or most likely responsible for these patients' findings. And it will literally be otolith as the answer on one of the neuroforms. In this case, wrong fucking answer. Choice B taxi telangiotasia, wrong answer, low yield. Uh, autosomal recessive chromosome 11, uh, ATM gene. Literally a patient will have uh, abnormal balance ataxia with telangiectasias, okay? So you say, well, what would ever be the point? What would they ever ask? They could ask uh, propensity for DNA breaks, okay, double-stranded DNA breaks. That is something that has been thrown around, increased risk of malignancy. So I would just, this is what I want you to take home. Ataxia, telangiectasia, not high yield, but it would presumably be a kid with ataxia and telangiectasias, and the answer, if they ask, would be propensity for DNA breaks. Wrong fucking answer. Choice A, acute cerebellar ataxia, correct answer. This is just viral infection, oftentimes chicken pox. If you check Google, you literally type in viral infection, acute cerebellar ataxia. They'll tell you that this can be seen following viral infections in kids. Uh, often chicken pox, okay? Now, this is literally just inflammation of the cerebellum after viral infection. Now, if you think this is extremely weird, it's actually not too crazy if you are aware of other diagnoses, such as toxic synovitis, transient synovitis, high yield for pediatrics. If you're studying for step one, you, you have no idea what that is either. Transient synovitis, toxic synovitis, just inflammation of the hip, for whatever reason, following a viral infection. It's not septic arthritis, okay? It's just inflammation of the hip following viral infection. 
Following viral infections, we can also get de Quervain thyroiditis, right? I mean, that could be seen as weird. Like why inflammation of the thyroid gland following a viral infection? So de Quervain thyroiditis, we can get uh, transverse myelitis of the spinal cord, which can present as brown saquard syndrome. So brown saquard syndrome is not someone stabbing someone perfectly through half the spinal cord. It's often transverse myelitis, autoimmune disease like SLE. It can be viral infection, transverse myelitis. So viral infections can sometimes cause weird inflammatory syndromes. Labyrinthitis, as I just fucking mentioned. Okay, vestibular neuritis, similar to labyrinthitis. You assume doesn't give a fuck on the difference. I don't want to go down that route. But this question, acute cerebellar ataxia following viral infection with chickenpox, this nearly identical question is on one of the neuroforms for 2CK. You're saying for step one, covered some high yield diagnoses for you. You know the deal, because you make more content. If you like my stuff, subscribe to my channel. And I appreciate your time. That's it.